Hey, it's Joe Glides from Godometer. And last week, Isaias and Irfan were on a team call, and Irfan asked about using XPath. And so Isaias gave him a little tutorial. And so I said, Hey, why don't you go, go ahead and record this? I had some other stuff to do, so I wasn't on the call. But um, I was just reviewing it. Lots of good information there. Irfan was using it because we're working with that new WinApp driver to try to get um, a new way to connect to programs. So it's our 19th way to connect to programs without a hotkey. And uh, in it, he's dealing with XML and XPath. And so uh, Zace was giving a little tutorial on it. Um, I also have a really good tutorial I did with Maestria several years ago. Uh, and he has a V1 class for dealing with XML that's phenomenal. So if you're new to XML, um, you can check this one out. Or if you're in V2, this is a great one for you. Um, even though Zace doesn't use AutoHotkey code, I don't think much in here. He's talking through how to get structures and that. But Maestria gave me tutorials on using learning XML and XPath with his class at the same time. So uh, both of those are good, but I hope you enjoy this. If you like the video, please hit a thumbs up, really helps us out and look forward to talking to you. Cheers. So what we're going to do, I'm not going to go too, into too much detail. I'm just going to do kind of like a very quick intro. Um, the, and, and we're going to use this probably to help anybody else. So um, the first idea when you hear the word X path is that you're going to use XML as if it was normal window paths. That's, that's what you have to understand. So let me show you. Can you see my screen? Yes. All right. So let's think. Let's... Let's say that you have an XML string that looks like this, and you have the XML version, whatever, and then we have main. And inside main, you have, um, you know, person, and then that person has. And instead of main, name, I get document. I don't know why. Yeah, don't worry about that. So let's say that you have this. So what we're talking about here is that now you want the name of that person, right? Okay. In XPath, it's so simple because in XPath, what you're going to do is that you're going to describe how to get there. And it is exactly as you would do a Windows path. You could say main slash person slash name. You see, it looks like a URL. Does that make sense? Yeah, that, that makes sense. Right. There are other details. This is the main part that you have to kind of like understand. Okay. Whenever you're accessing paths, you're just accessing them using the slash format. There's sometimes that you have to add and get an attribute. For example, Spanish equals one. So you know that sometimes the things have attributes in them. Yes. Those are a little bit trickier because you have to use the add sign, I think. Yes. We will take a look at that in a second. But yeah, I, I, I am doing that. Yes, equals right. to one. Yes. Right. But that's it. So whenever you're using XPath, just know you're accessing a path using forward slashes and the at the at sign to access attributes. The problem comes when you want to access the second person. So let's say that you have a second person here, right? So let's say this is language equals ES, and this is language, equals, what is it that you speak? You are. Farsi, Urdu? Sorry, you, you are. You are, yes. Urdu, right? Yeah, Urdu. So there we go. So basically now we have two people, and now how do I access the second person? That's where it gets a little bit tricky, and there's a lot of ways to do that. What I would really suggest is that you take a look at um, W3 schools, right? Okay. You go to XML. XML. Right. And at the bottom, 
they do have um, not the query, uh, they do have the XPath references. So let me let me look for XPath here. Yeah, here it goes. XPath tutorials. And if you go to the XML tutorial, at the bottom, you will see one that says XPath tutorial. tutorial. This is the interesting part. They give you examples. You can test them. And um, it's really easy to follow. Okay. And here's the part that you have to understand, the syntax. That's it. Double. And the syntax is really simple. You see, it's what I was telling you. You see that? OK. The only thing, you see these two slashes at the beginning? That means, hey, select them anywhere they are in the oh, document. Yeah. Because, um, right, because here I told it, start at main and go then find person and oh. then find name, right? But if I want all the names, I could just simplify that and say, give me all the names. And that would give you a list of nodes. It's not going to give names. you one. Yeah, list of elements. Right. And when it gives you a list, then you can either loop through them or get with the access key like number two. You see, you can get a specific number. Does that make sense? Yes. And that's it. Now, now I can like look for how to how to go to the next sibling and uh, get the child and the parent. Yeah, the child and parent. Uh, so this is the current node. This is the parent node. And really? if you want the next one, yeah, there is two dots. So for example, you can get, check this out, get the name, get the parent of name. That's it. It's oh, just really? like if it was a Windows path. <laughs> okay. And then you can say, give me the first parent. You see the parent here, the number one? OK. So, so if you look at the examples here, as I mentioned, in this example, you have two people, right? So you okay. can say, give me all the per all the people. So person, all that will give you a list of two people. And now okay. give me the second one. You see that? Oh, all and give or, me the second one. OK. Yes. Or you can say, give me the person whose language equals Urdu, and that would give you Irfan. Oh, cool. You see? So in the bracket, you can make comparisons, you can make certain expressions, and you can see them there. You can get either the position is less than three, give me the last one, give me the second to last one, give me any book that the price is more than 35. You can do very cool expressions in there. And then once you get it, once you get that, give me the type. Give me the title. And in this case, I would say, hey, give me the person whose language equals Urdu. And then once you have it, give me the name of that person. You see that? So you can have an expression in here that gives you the particular person. And then what do you want from that person? I just want the name. See what uh, I mean? Actually, then, then the language should be inside the person. No, no, because no, 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 because I have it as an attribute of the name. See yeah, it, yeah. So we are getting the name, and you are looking inside the person. Oh, sorry. Yes, I understand what you mean. <laughs> yeah. So this here, and then get the name. Right, because this is the. Yes. Even though I th yeah exactly so the name has that attribute I was putting it in the wrong location yeah sorry and now we do not need to do the name in the end I think I think yes you do because what you get here once you do that you get what is called a node it's an object you get an object okay and that object which is a node yeah has, is a node. has. right has. that thing right now you want to get the name so if you want the text if you want that yeah. you have we, to we then can do put... dot, dot, dot text well not exactly but yes yes that's that's correct it would be 
if you just got the node, you could say that, yeah, node that's, that's text, right. Yes. Yep. Yeah, you can say that. Or you can get the text directly because when you do this, if you do that person name, right? You can get the text. What you're getting there is basically the text, not the note, but the text. Because okay. once the once the node that you're getting is text, you get the text. Does that make sense? Oh no, okay. sorry, no. It would be a node, sorry. It's still a node. You still have to do the node text. Oh, That's okay. right. So that, that was but, in my mind. Right, yeah, exactly. But as you can see, the the way how you work with this is very simple once you get yeah, the basics of it. It, it, seems, it seems very simple. Right. But now I, can we can we do a next sibling? I try yes, to find you can. Yes, you can. So um if I remember right, you have operators. Uh let me see. You can get this is what you do for the nodes, man. Ancestor, there is an ancestor. Yeah, you can do all that because the nodes, whenever you have the nodes, hold on. Okay. The nodes have. Yeah, next sibling. You can get the next sibling, the last, the first, the child. You can get everything. In the in, but that's because of the node. Okay. Sometimes what you get, and in 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 the example of just get all the persons objects like this, what you get is a node list, and yeah. this node then, list. Then we have to then you, you have to the get the node, and, and then yes. Yeah, you have the length or the item in the list. That's that's basically what you have. So again, once you get the idea, it's very simple. What you don't, I don't know if you know, is that Windows has a node parser in it. I don't know if you're using it. No, actually, so, I'm doing WinApp driver. Actually, WinApp driver has, has his own methods. And <laughs> we are getting oh, okay. elements with, yeah. So everything okay. is like same, but the next sibling was not working for me. Okay. So let me I show don't you know. something. Let me show you this. In my AutoHotKey toolkit, my settings are saved, stored in XML. And okay. what you use for that is this the X yeah, MS yeah, XML2 you, you, document. Yeah, you are using so I have kind of like a COM object, right? Once you have the COM object, then you can go ahead and um, and call it. You see the load to load an, an, an XML string into the memory. You can do that. And later on, let me see. You can save that here. XML. The document element. You can yeah. then from the root, you can get the attributes. You can get the node text. You see all all what you're expecting that you can do with that, you can do it without a hotkey if you load that object. But as you mentioned, that and, and here are the paths. You see that? Yeah. So I say select single node so, and so I give it the path uh, of what I want. So they are, what what is with me is like I'm doing API calls. Mm -hmm. The element I get is just a reference to the element. I'm creating, I'm building the HK class with mimic, which has to mimic as an element. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I do element dot like X part. <laughs> so, this for is example, that... yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, instead of select single node, you will have the X path thing, right? Yeah. And, and then, as you notice here, what I'm saying, give me find the one that is called hotkeys anywhere in the document and, and once you find it. it give me the count attribute okay okay uh, Isaiah, let, let me ask you something if i get to a certain node like there are whole xml and i find an element in between and i go to that pointer and now now can i like X path from that point to anywhere, like no, the X path, 
No, the X path only works. So for example, you see here that I say options, select single node. This X path right here only works inside the options node. That's the reason why at the beginning, I also gro grab the root element. So the root element, which so is, is the, the whole document. Th th that's the com object. But no, 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 what's... no, that's not the com object. No, that's not the com object. The this root? is the com object. No, it's not the, so the configure object is the com object. So okay. this is the com object. From there, I got what is called the document element and that is yeah, the whole element. XT. So that is the whole XML. Yeah, whole but document. This one, which is the options, is just the first child. So if in options, I do a search, it's not going to search for it in the whole document. Yeah. That's why I have them separate, right? So, yeah, so the root... Yeah, yeah. I, I just want to confirm that. So from, right. from document pointer, you can look into the document, but... The whole document. Outside. Yeah, yeah. you cannot but look outside, yes. Of what you got. So in this case, yeah. if you grab a node, yeah. once you grab the node, whatever XPath you're doing is actually just in, within that node. It's not going to be in the whole document. Part, yes. Right. So very good. Um, I hope that you understood that. Um, it's, it's basically very simple. And as you can see, many times I select a single node, grab the thing, and then I just get the text of it and put it somewhere. See what I mean? So okay. that you, is just the normal node way of working. And as you see from the root, I can get the attributes of an item and just get the item that I want. So everything is exactly as you expected. The only thing that you have to learn is just this part. It's just imagine that you're actually, doing Windows. Actually, I, I played with the XMLs, but mm -hmm. uh, but I uh, what I am dealing with is like I'm using API call to a web driver, which, which returns a reference to a node element in mm -hmm. our application XML. And okay. with that <laughs> Yeah, it becomes so everything is being done with the web driver. I just reference it. But I have to like give a, a create a HK class that mimic a, as that element using that reference. So so let me just share, share you that complicated mm -hmm. stuff. So, so no worries. okay. So this is the XML that I get, but this yes. is just uh, just for reading. Like this is yeah, and uh, this is and this the is basically preview can can change every time, so it is not the live preview. Okay, but it is just and as you can see, there's a lot of attributes in there, so you will have to get used to reading attributes. And uh, and there now is, uh, here, like, hold on. Okay, let, so... let me show you something. So. I was there. Uh, I think I missed something. Yes. So. Okay. So I can do these things like find element by some attribute. Yes, and that will return and a node element. Name and the name. Yeah, right. that will return a node element. Right. And, uh, and this, I cannot, here I at cannot the bottom, query selector. No, <laughs> well, but, right, that, that's that basically, so the part that says find element by X path, that's the query selector or yeah. the single so, single yeah. node select. Th that's not the query selector expert. That's that's no. the XML expert. So I was confused. Right. So right. what I have to do? So right. But In this case, you see the locator strategy that it says XPath. That's just uh, what we just discussed. In there, if you find element by XPath, in the quotation marks, you have to put an XPath there. And uh, so, yeah, that yeah. These are all working so that it is working. You can see mm -hmm. I can do get attributes, but I yes, just which, it. Yeah. <laughs> now, the, I just the next sibling it. right there, you see yeah, down there, go back to where you were. Yeah, but it is not working. For no, because reason. you cannot do it that way. 
So okay. the next sibling, you see that next sibling right there? I have to do it like... Right, that is outside. That is a dot notation that you have to get. If you're getting an X... So... Like like this? You, no, outside of that. So so basically, let me let me have... Let me see if I control. can have control. Okay. Right. You can have control. Right. First of all, you would put here the this guy here, you're going to use a normal X path. Whoops, that's not what I meant. You're going to do the whole X path thing here. And then outside of that, then you say next sibling. Oh, As a, there, there, a, there is no API call for the next sibling. That's the question. So the question is, you see when it says get element by X path? What are you getting? Are you getting an XPath node? Or are no, you getting... I, I am getting a reference to that element. Right, it's then you a... cannot do that. Right, then you cannot do that. Not like this then. So let me, yeah, let, me, I, I... let me check something because XPath might have these other ceiling strings, blah, blah, blah. Boolean. Let me see if I can find next. Nope. Elements. Nope. Then you will have to find out how they. So let me show you. I'm going to share my screen for a second here. Hold on. Let me share okay. my screen. And you're going to tell me. So once you do the get element by X path. Okay. Do you get a node object like this or not? I because if you get, do, I if get you do, reference. I get element reference to XML node object, not the node object should, because I'm doing API calls. Right, I am but, accessing that node with the API calls. Right. If you're getting a reference to yes. a node object. Node object. Yes, it's a node object. Then sure. then check if you can do that call right here. And and it is as I showed you outside. It's a dot notation call from the object, not not inside the X path. Because one thing one thing is the X path. Can you go to the example of this? Can you go to the example? An example of next sibling? Yeah. Yeah. Right, sure. So how they are doing it. Yeah. From the node object, oh, you do the next okay. sibling. So, and, and that would return another reference to another node object. So basically, it is what you have to understand. There's two things. One of them is the X path, which is a short way for you to get a node. Okay. okay. But once you get the node, the node is an object that has a few up the, a few functions in it. So here it says, look at this, XML doc. That's the XML document, the, the document. He used get elements by tag name and he got that title one and put it there. That X is now an object, it's a node. Does that make sense? Okay. Let me, and that let me just, X, let, you have the, you remember how you said that you could say uh, node text, right? So yes. check this out. The node, depending on the type, if you have a, a, a yeah, there, that, you have the text there content. Is a, there, there is an API call to get node text. There is an API call to go get node name. But there and then there should be one. There, there is no API call reference in the document. For getting the getting next sibling. The child and the next right. sibling so, so and that the is parent. something that So that is something that either you cannot do with that right there. What you could do then is just get a reference to the <laughs> actually, list and then just loop and get the one that you want. Actually, let me show you. this. Mm -hmm. Even though, even though this, I think get, there, this should get be, attributes, there should be this, a, a way of doing this that. This get attributes. Um, I can't see not, it. your screen. You're not I'm sharing sorry. your screen. Let, let me share my screen. So this get attribute was not mentioned in the document. So I just tried it according mm -hmm. to W3C so, mm -hmm. and it, it worked. So let me go to the W3C. So, so this is the element element ID attribute and attribute name. Okay. So I'm doing, I'm doing right. Just like that. 
and it, uh, it now it, then it, you will need it, another it one right so now for example you had the text there but if they don't tell you how to get the yeah, next the, the, right i can see that you yeah. get a few of them but if you don't have one to get the next one like the the child go up a little bit but i can do find element from element and that's the one that you need then yeah exactly that's what you need that gives you the children and that gives you the next so 12.4 and 12.5 are the ones that you have to implement to get the children or get the siblings so Does but uh, how, how how can i mention in my payload what is the children and what is let's suppose this is the get get siblings so we are using for example i'm calling this functions this function right now right there so for id i call id and i put the id so using mm -hmm. id value is id this is the payload and okay. what would be the payload for the ch child or next sibling let's I go let, let's go back let's go back um go back to the documentation no not there the documentation the file okay but so there go is to no go to 14 yeah of course go to 12 12 okay so here it says um yeah you are here you need go up uh well this element from this, element yeah, so you element need element. the element id that you're looking for yeah we have then, element id mm -hmm, let me see hold on the using the selector be the result of getting a property called value so hold on there are limited selector for for when app driver so mm -hmm. so there are like these these are the selectors then you just get a selector like that yeah so then you say element get element by name and then whatever that result is that's what you have to send on the other on the other but, end the value but how to do it for the child and the parent it depends what your selector is. Uh, so, so, let's suppose, so let me, let's, let me, suppose let me, let's suppose my selector is Xbox. Right. So let's let's do this. Hold on. Check this out. Get children. Okay. Of course, you need the parent. And the selector. Now, in your response, here you're going to use the parent. And here, it's not the selector that you're going to send. It's not the selector, it's the result of that selector. So you have to do a call on that. So, parent dot get um, element by x path and then you will have your selector and whatever that results into what I'm understanding is that that's what you have to pass as a value here does that make sense and that would actually give you the response of that of the next child now it depends on what you're doing i don't know if you can do this what you're asking for but that's what yeah, it looks we, like to we, me. we can we cannot do that okay actually. but that's the point so, so when you go back so what we have to figure out here is what the value is the selector be the result of getting actually, a property le let me show you let me show you uh -huh. so this is the using and this is the value so i'm calling it here so for class name i'm just doing the by class name so there is a by mm -hmm. class let me show you there is a by class where it is uh, there it is control F. this one this one so these are the values so expat tag name name id class name Accessible. Well, it could be an X path then. Okay. So it and the X path then would be trying to grab the next the the, the children. Next so it is a little bit complicated. Um, what I would say where you're going to 
you're being limited with the options that you can use because you don't <laughs> yes. have a node, right? But, but even though you're limited by that, I think you can do it. Try to find an example of it. Just search for win app, win, uh, win X app, whatever. And then you do get yeah. all the childs, get, get all the children from a expat, get all children, expat, get all children. For example, there should be, yeah, I think somebody has made that question before. And somebody's going to give you an example of it. You see, you see that? You see that X path there, right there? That gets all the children of the current node. So probably you could use that uh, here. I had it first, that wouldn't work. There was a. I ran across, hold on. I ran across. Yep, so that is possible in a very specific version here. Find elements by accessibility. You see what I told you? That you would grab that here and then pass it again into another call. Let me see. Basically, you can get all the children of a given thing by using XPath by itself. You can say, yeah, uh, let me yeah, show you. I'm, I'm, I'm doing that. Let me show you. So, so but it will, it will return not the children, but all the, all the, all the ones below. Yeah, but, but with the steric, I can do that. So if I do something like this, uh let me show you something like this Slash now, star. Yeah, yes, now, that gives you now i can get the children of that element yes that's so, it so what i have to do is just do this because i am at this yes pointer. exactly exactly okay. now now you're gonna so basically what i'm saying is of course there is no function to do that it seems to be but you can still do it we just have to figure out which way you can do that. So when, when you want to implement your get children function, just grab a node reference and pass it the star, the, the slash star, and that should be do it. Yeah, that should so, do it for you. Uh, here on what, 258. What, what I can do. Uh, just give me give me a second. I, I'm doing uh -huh. that. Okay. And we I do not have to do anything. Okay. Okay. That would be this. Okay. The send. Uh-huh. And then it would be the start. Yeah, that, yeah that there you go. Yeah, that would be that should be it. Right. And once and you once the, you get for, the idea, right. For the parent, <laughs> yeah, for the parents, now it will work. The, for the for the parent, parent, it would be two dots, like two dots. <laughs> slash two dots, right? Slash no, two well, dots. the slash two dots, yeah, that. Yes. You see what I mean? So that, that <laughs> should, in theory, give you a reference yeah, to the, the parent. Yeah, the, not, yeah. Not, that should work. So. Yeah, Okay, that, that, that's cool. We found something. Right, there you go. So, But, but for the next sublink, I cannot do next sublink in there. Um, the you can do, yes, you can do the, hold on. I think there is a way to get the next sibling um, with XPath. Let me see, XPath, uh, not the operators, but the syntax. Um, no, sorry, the access. This is what I think it is here. Can I see your screen? Yeah, let me, let me. You can clip share it, or maybe. No, I'm, I'm just making sure that um are you let me start your screen okay now i can see your screen. so there is there is a way to get what are called access right and those are relationship to the current node so you can get the ancestors you can get the child you can get the parent 
And you can next the siblings, if I remember right. Let me see, following sibling, you see that? And then the way how you do that is this guy. So you could say, I want all the siblings. So let me see. Where is following sibling? Following siblings. So it will be following sibling. And then you have to say for all of them, I guess. I guess all of them. And that is your X path from this. This get elements by X path. Whoops. That's something that you can do. Let me make this quotation mark so that it is easier to read. This is something that you can do. It is something in X path that you can give it. You can give the next child, the descendants, the ancestors. You can get the child, all of them. And from that, you can get the price from, you know. So you have to understand the axes as, as well. That's, that's something else that you can learn. Okay. So there's the syntax, which is what we just saw. Okay. So yes. this is the normal syntax. Okay. And beside the syntax, there are the axes, which those guys allow you to refer to things relative to the current node. Does that make sense? Yes. Look at that, like the grandparent, the parent. You can get a lot of weird things with this. <laughs> okay. Now that's cool. Yeah. It, it is really... Uh, it's really complicated sometimes when, when you have so, a very... So I, I'm working with Linux driver and Desplada did UIA and it has a tree walker. So okay. what, is the pur what is the purpose of tree walker? I think you're changing the subject there for the expat. Yeah, so let's now, do this. No, 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 no. It's, it's another subject because All I right, yeah. so let me to let me... do it and understand <laughs> the tree walker and implement it in the web driver. Right. So let's go ahead and um, uh, stop the video here. I <laughs> okay. think this is a good kind of like introduction to XPath, even though it got XPath, a little bit more. Yes. Right. It, it, okay. Even though it got a little bit more advanced at the end, but at least the first part is kind of like very simple introduction to how it works. Um, so let me stop the video now and uh, let's continue with the next topic. So let me stop there. Cool.